Welcome to another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'm your host, Simon. In this episode, we have a great interview with Red Fag, and we have another edition of our Wicked Words segment. But first, the underground spotlight falls on False Flag. Tell us a little bit about the new CD. Uh, we recorded it with me and Dylan at uh, Electric Park Studios. Over the course of the last eight months, pretty much, we uh, did it pretty casually, just went in and out. When we started the CD, we were a two-piece. Me and Nick were pretty much the only ones left over from the old, the old uh, lineup that we had with Garrett from After Earth. Anyway, we got Mikey and Dan back in the band from the old Megiddo lineup. I don't know if anybody remembers that old lineup, but we never recorded anything. But anyway, we're back as a fucking team doing this shit, and uh, we're going to start working on our new album immediately after this one. So Feels good. Yeah. Feels really good. <laughs> The album's called Suffer in Silence. Uh, we have a uh, song called that as well. We, uh, I don't know, just we, we went in with Ian, who's our bud, and just uh, worked with the most comfortable people that we know, so we're comfortable in the studio. No one likes to be stressed out in the studio spending money and, you know, sounding like shit. Uh, but we, we took our time. It was definitely a learning experience, just like any other recording experience. But, uh, you know, we're, we've learned a lot from the experience too, and we're gonna keep pushing forward. <laughs> Can our viewers find some of your guys' music? Uh, there's some on YouTube, some Reverb Nation. We're gonna update all our fucking Bandcamp shit, Even but we need a, an actual website. So that's our next step, just to get a website going for merch and you know accessing the music and be able to purchase it. So. so what's next for False Flag? You mentioned that you're writing a new album. Yeah, working on a new album immediately for sure. But push this album a bit more. Obviously, go out of town, and play some Red Deer Edmonton shows around tours, the area. Tours. I'd love to hit BC soon, but I, I'm thinking we're not going to do any touring until next year, early next year, sometime. So, but yeah, we're working on a bunch of new songs. I mean, we'll push out another album as quick as possible too. Fuck. We got a new lineup. Basically, we're, we're a fucking team. So yeah, it's going to be sweet, man. Like there's going to be there's ideas coming out of the ass, you know, like in a good a, way, not like a lot of harmonies too. Not eh? like a Pepto oh, way. Like I don't want Pepto. Pep I don't want Pepto Bismol for these ideas. <laughs> Welcome to Extreme Metal TV. I am JP from MetalRules.com and this segment is called Wicked Words where we look at various books about hard rock and heavy metal. This week we're going to be looking at a brand new book called I'm the Man by Scott Ian. Published in late 2014 by Decapo Press, this is Scott Ian's official autobiography. It's a fantastic hardcover book, we spared no expense with glossy art, it's loaded with photos, and as a bonus feature it also comes with a comic that Scott himself wrote. It's all about meeting Lemmy from Motorhead, so it's a, a neat feature. Scott tells his life story in a standard fashion, going from growing up in uh, New York in the early days, talks about the early days of anthrax and SOD, and of course he goes through his entire history. And if you're familiar with Ian from his many appearances on documentaries and on his recent talk circuit, he has fantastic stories. He talks about uh, the industry, talks about the good, the bad, he doesn't pull any punches, uh, of course talks a little bit about his personal life and how the birth of his child changed his entire outlook. It's a fantastic work. Any fan of Scott and Anthrax are going to want to own I'm the Man. Portland, Oregon's Red Fang recently rolled through Calgary. EMTV's own Carlin had the opportunity to catch up with the guys. Keep in mind that the audio is a little iffy on this segment, but I think you guys will enjoy it. Your 
compared to like Winter Marathon? Uh, uh, I would say, <laughs> I'd say the, the food is uh, is bad. Is higher quality in general over there? The, the, I feel like uh, there's a lot less uh, hideous farts happening over there uh, because our diets are better. Yeah, our, on our part. Yes, on our part. Uh, well, in general, we don't. Uh, I can't say I've noticed like other people's farts aside from ours very much. I was anywhere though. Oh, I have. Yeah. Uh, Just like strangers walking down the street, and you're like, yeah, what's that cloud? No, oh, where we was at uh, Edmonton. We were out in front of the club, and a uh, bass player from uh, Shooting Guns. He was shooting guns. He was, out of his, was shooting guns out of his ass. Yeah, he's like, oh, sorry, man, I'll do it. Don't come over here. I was, I was doing a courtesy walk. I was like, God, you were. I, I walked right into it. Uh, I feel like one of the things that I've noticed about at least the crowds in Europe versus, well, in the U.S. Uh, is they're kind of like, I don't know if it's because they go to more soccer games or something where they're used to like chanting and stuff, but they're, they seem like more cohesive as a unit, like responding to us, like there's more like singing along or something, and then there's that part, like, part of the end of throw up where people always start like chanting right at the end of that. You and, they do the, about? and they do the rowboat thing. Oh yeah, the, the soccer oh, chant. Right, right, right. And they do this rowing thing where they sit down and they like sit, like straddle the legs kind of like, like that, and then they row a boat in the middle. It's like, you know, there's all those people dance around and stuff, and then suddenly there's, a, there's like eight, ten coordinated, people yeah. coordinated doing um, pantomiming the uh, rowing a boat. So. I would like to know what that's all about, but anyway, that kind of thing. Or in France, was they all sort of climbing on the top of the stage and then laying on top of each other, not really moving, but just just stacking up like two, like three and four high. That was really bizarre. Well, let's talk about the music videos. You guys, I just want to ask, do you guys have to create control over them, or is it just your directors? They're his ideas. I mean, he takes input, but yeah. I mean, well, he doesn't. He doesn't always take it. <laughs> he, you can he, tell he, him he I feigns do. interest in your input, right. and he's like, hey, no, okay, whatever. We're gonna do what I was gonna do, what I wanted to do." But I, I think that if there's stuff that if we're uncomfortable with it, then of course we have the right to say no to stuff, and he's not gonna put stuff. But you know, we're just not gonna let him put stuff there that we're not comfortable with. But uh, but as far as the creative, the creative part of it. Most of our input just gets. Uh, Any stunt doubles? So far, I have. No. Uh, so, like in the Waters video where the sun get no longer. Oh, we're working on it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 I got the, uh, the watermelon can't half. You got, watermelon got sliced in half yeah. and it came through and hit me on the, the head, but it didn't, I, it didn't hurt very much. There were some like minor cuts and bruises. Yeah, glass, like that safety glass, it still cuts a little bit. What's, what's a typical day important for me? For me, it's a very typical day is uh, I'll get up and I'll get my son to school, which is always an ordeal. Um, drop them off and then go to the gym for a while and then go home and like cook some food and fuck around on the guitar for a little while and then go pick up my son from school and make dinner and then fall asleep while I'm reading the story and then go to bed. That's pretty much it. Super exciting. Oh, and then like fighting dragons. Forgot about that part. This time around we're taking a look at Sin Squid Games Black Metal Man. In true black metal fashion, the logo of the game is barely legible. There is no licensed music in this game, but there are some pretty cool original tunes, my favorites being Chainsaw Guts Duck and Transylvanian Slumber. Let's take a look at the gameplay. It's pretty straightforward, side-scrolling runner, avoid the gaps, if you fall, you die. Also avoid the crosses, they will slow you down, and if you do slow down too much and touch that light at the left hand of the screen, it will 
also kill you. I'm gonna assume that it's the light of God. You can collect pentagrams and inverted crosses to increase your speed. You can also ride the lightning and well, that is metal as fuck. Black Metal Man is a hell of a lot of fun and probably the most cult game you will find out there. You can buy it from iTunes and Google Play. Well, that's it for another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'd like to thank you all for joining us once again. I'd also like to thank the entirety of the Extreme Metal Television family. Remember, folks, if you'd like to see some of our previous episodes or contact us, feel free to visit our website at extrememetal.tv. January 2015, 70,000 tons of metal. If you don't have a ticket, make sure you get one. The world's largest heavy metal cruise. I will be there. If you're there, I'll see you there. Until next time. Keep it metal.